Hi, my name is Kent Virtus. I work for Patterson Dental. I'm a technology uh, advisor with Patterson Dental and I go through all uh, offices throughout Northern California and train on how to use various technologies from the practice management to imaging to CEREC to cone beam, uh, pretty much all of Patterson's technology. So I'm here today. Your, uh, your uh, school has just made a large investment in new sensors. Uh, there's obvious advantages to sensors. You get the image right away, and it's about 60% less radiation than film. Um, about 80% of California dentists, at least, now use digital, so uh, you'll probably see this when you get out more than you'll see film. Um, eventually, there's a mandate to be all digital, so at that point, eventually, schools will be starting to obsolete the film at some point. Um, the first thing to know about this sensor is that this is about $12,000, so we really need to take care of it. Um, we need to store it properly, we need to um, use it properly, and we always want to be sensitive, particularly with the cord. Most of the damage that happens is with the cord, so it will get shut in a door, or you will grab it around the arm and you'll pull it. Um, so we want to make sure we're taking care of this cord, okay? Uh, when we're done with it, we do want to wipe it off 18 inches with a, with a cavi wipe or alcohol. We definitely do not want to spray it, okay, so if you're using any sort of spray, we want to put it on a 4x4 first and then wipe it off. Of course, uh, we don't want to autoclave it, we don't want to uh, run it under water or anything like that, okay? Now, when we're plugging it in, we're going to plug it in so that there's a remote under here. Every operatory has one of these remotes, and you're just going to take this sensor and blue to blue and white to white plug it in. Okay? Uh, once we, when we're ready to unplug it, we definitely don't want to grab it by the cord. So we want to hold the remote and pull it out. Okay? Um, as I said, this is going to have a barrier on it. So the barriers are specific. Right now, this is a size 2 sensor. Uh, the size 2 is a true size 2, like a size a 2 film. Uh, when we're using these, this can be shoot about 85 to 90 percent of our adult shots. We do have a size one that is smaller that we can use if they have a lot of toroid or very short pellets. But whenever we go to a size one on an adult, we're giving up something. We're usually giving up bone level on a bite wing or the apexes on a PA. Um, so the barriers will be specific to size one or size two. So I'm going to slide this barrier on. You do need a barrier for every, for every shot. Once I get that barrier on, sometimes these little edges are very sharp for the patient, so we can just break that down really quickly. And then you would take your images. When we're done with this, we don't want to pull on this too hard. We're just going to use this, and basically we're going to squeeze it like a watermelon seed, and it's just going to fall out. Okay. Um, so be careful of the cord. We will be... Uh, we will be storing these overnight in a cabinet, so the faculty will explain where these go when we're done. Um, as far as in the operatory, when we're, when we're ready to hang it up, you can't see it, but there's a hanger on this side, and we're just going to hang it in here. This is good for the size 1 or the size 2. So this is pretty much where it will stay during the day, but at night and in the morning we'll put them away and take them out. So we went a little bit over sensor care and how valuable these are and, and how to protect the cord especially. Obviously we don't want to drop it on the ground either. Uh, but now we're going to talk about the, the software itself. So uh, when you come in in the morning the monitors will be on and you can just double click this icon down here and we're going to open up the Patterson, image, Patterson software. Um, with that icon we can access the patient's schedule, we can ac access their account, and we can also access their images. So all the data is in one icon on the desktop. We're going to drop down and find the name of who, of who you are. Every student will have, a, will have a login with a password. They will help you set up the password. Once you have the password, you'll, you'll enter it and log on. Uh, this is the clinic view back here. And we're basically going to grab a patient. So we're going to click this patient button over here. We're going to search for our patient. In this instance, I'm going to put, bring in a test patient. And we're going, to, we're going to double click right on that blue line. And now test test is sitting in this, in this operatory. So we can only have one patient in. So for obvious reasons, we only want to have one patient on the computer at a time. 
So we can click, uh, we have a lot of uh, icons on here, but we're going to click right on this x-ray right here on the computer screen. And it's, it's going to open up the oldest images. So you're going to see chronologically the newest one on top and the oldest one on the bottom. When we're ready to take the Im new images, we're going to click right down here on new exams and we're going to choose what exam you want to do. So you might be doing an FMX, you might be doing four bite wings, or you might be doing four vertical bite wings. So once you have the, the uh, template that you're going to use, we're basically, once it's plugged in down here, we're going to see this blinking blue and yellow. When it's blinking blue and yellow, we're ready to take an image. Once we take an image, it's automatically going to advance to two, and three and four. Now, number one here is a right molar. We gotta make sure we take the right molar in here because if we do not, it's gonna be flipped and we'll have to alter that. It's not the end of the world, but we will have to flip it. But we do wanna make sure we go in order and we're taking the right shot in each one. So we went out, we went over sensor care. Uh, we talked a little bit about the software. Obviously there's more, you're gonna learn about that. Uh, the next thing we're going to touch on is the actual placement. Uh, so when we're working with digital x-rays, we have a sensor that doesn't bend. So it's a lot different than film. Again, um, it's half the radiation, but it's a little bit more tricky to place. When we're using film, we can just put it up against the lingual, the teeth, and the film naturally bends with the palate, and it naturally bends with the arch. When we're dealing with sensors, it doesn't do that. So with sensors, we need to put it right in the midline because there is more space in the midline. Therefore, we, we have a better chance of being able to have the patient close down to where a point where we don't have that much space in between the teeth. Okay? Uh, if we put it too lingual, the patient's going to hit here and it's not going to be able to close down. When we're putting it in a palate, we do need different types of holders. So with film, we're, we usually a lot of times we use the bite wing tabs. And with that, that's okay because we can leave it more lingual. When we're dealing with digital, we need to put it in the midline. Therefore, we need a holder that can get us there. Um, there's all kinds of reasons to use the RIN, but one of them is that we can actually place this sensor in the midline. So there's different types. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna come across different types of holders, different types of RIN systems. Um, you're just gonna have to feel what, obviously what the, the doctor's using or what you're using. Uh, but there are different ones. So this is the bite wing tab, and I know that because it's red with the red ring, and I just want to make sure that it's got the bullseye. Um, this is just takes practice to use and which ring goes with which holder and which bar. So it's a little bit of a puzzle, but with some work you can figure out which ones it is. So real quickly, we're going to just put this in the, in the Dexter, so we can back that off, put it in the patient's mouth. So we can, we can put it in like this so the patient does not have to overextend and then we can then we can sweep the tongue across okay and then we're going to tell the patient to gently close uh, when we're putting that in when we put it in straight we're going to have closed contacts so one of the things you want to do is after you put it in we're going to give it a little mesial bend that way we can open those contacts okay when once we got it positioned good we tell the patient to gently close down and now we're going to put this ring all the way up against the patient's, the patient's cheek. Okay? We need it as close as possible, preferably touching, but we don't want to jar the patient, so it, it's okay if it comes off a little bit. When we're putting this, the head up, we definitely want to make sure it's parallel. So we don't want to see it like this, where we have a big gap here and a big gap here, and we don't want to see a big gap here and a small gap there. So it's got to be parallel to the ring. And we've got to look at it all a bunch of different angles, but basically, once we think it's parallel, we're going to go over to the, the, the remote and we're going to take the shot. As I said, um, with film, we're going to, with digital, we're going to be about half the radiation than film, okay? And what we're going to be looking at is this number. So with digital, it pretty much ranges anywhere probably from 0.06 to 0.12. Now, this head we have here, this system, x-ray system, is fairly new. That's why we can have it uh, between 06 and 08. Now, there's all kinds of different heads that you'll, you'll, you'll come across. 
Um, it won't always be between 0.06 and 0.12, okay? So we really need to look at the image to see if it's a good exposure. For example, when we take a, when we take a lower anterior shot, there's not a lot of bone, so we can probably be somewhere around 0.06 or 0.08. But as we come up to that upper molar shot, we have to come through that zygomatic bone, and that we need to hit a lot harder. So we need, sometimes we need to go point to point 0.1. If it's too light, we can't diagnose it. So if it's very light and grainy, that's usually soft tissue. If we didn't go through the soft tissue, we didn't go through the enamel, okay? So we typically want a few settings because the same setting for the anterior is not the same setting for the bite for the upper upper molars. So we really want to make sure we, we're using this to get the to correct exposure. Um, similar, if we sit down a young female, uh, her bite wings might be 0.08. If we sit down a large male, their bite wings to get a proper might be 0.1 or 0.12. So it's not always just about this number, it's about the image that we get. So we do like to err, or we do like to lean towards a darker setting. So if the first one you take at 0.08 is light and grainy, then the next one you take, you want to just bump it up to 0.1. Um, the, the, every, every operatory is a little bit different, um, so you'll have to look at these numbers right here. And of course your faculty will help you guide through what a good image looks like digitally. Okay, so that's a quick overview of sensor care, a little bit on how to use the software and a little bit of placement. Obviously, you're going to learn more from the faculty, but um, I just wanted to thank you for your time and uh, I hope you have lots of success. Thank you.